Like all Alaska's superior court judges, Mike Jeffrey sees the link between alcohol and crime daily. It's huge. I mean, it's gigantic. Most of the criminal cases that we have, people were drunk. Jeffrey, who's been a judge in Barrow for 32 years, is the only superior court judge on the North Slope. He oversees hearings on nearly all serious crime committed in an area the size of Minnesota, as well as all child welfare, juvenile delinquency, and child custody matters. Decades ago, Judge Jeffrey says he began to wonder if some of the people accused in court were affected by alcohol in the womb. In 1990, a defense attorney presented evidence that her client had been diagnosed as having fetal alcohol exposure. And so her pitch was it would be manifestly unjust to sentence him without taking this condition into account to, do, to, to try to lower somewhat the jail time and increase time on probation out in the community. That was, that was the pitch she was making. And I agreed. Jeffrey began to read more studies on drinking in pregnancy. I was realizing one of the symptoms with FASD, or, or at least depending on how much someone is affected, is that the whole idea of consequences doesn't really mean much. The idea is there's the primary disability, which is the, the cooked brain and what that does, and then there's how it plays out in someone's life. And they were, what they did is they just studied, well, you know, there's high percentages of people getting in trouble with the law, high percentages of people who have trouble with their housing, you know, all of this. Alaska has the highest known statewide fetal alcohol syndrome rate in the country. And the highest rate in the state is in the Northwest, where Judge Jeffrey presides. He began to apply what he learned in court. And then I start to think how big it is, because it's not just defendants, it's witnesses and civil cases. Uh, it's people getting maybe, you know, interviewed by the police and wanting to please. I mean, it just plays out in all these areas. And so that's when I started this process of trying to grapple with it. That means changing the way I do things. That's been a challenge, he says, since the effects of fetal alcohol exposure are often impossible to see. There is no diagnosis team headquartered in Barrow and there is no reliable way to know just by looking or talking with a person. People appear and talk at age level or more. I mean, the, and yet, this, you know, the, the research is they might not be understanding, you know, they might be understanding of someone half their age. Well, I've given up on the idea of altering the way I do things significantly if somebody I think is affected or isn't affected. I just have realized I'm hardly ever going to get a diagnosis. There's almost no way to tell. You know? Instead, Jeffrey says he has added techniques that differ from what one might see in any other Alaska courtroom. But he says they are ideas that treat everyone fairly, regardless of fetal alcohol exposure. One of them is slowing down the hearing. That and using informal language as much as I can. I'd feel a little more comfortable if we kind of just review your rights. Uh, uh, it's not super clear to me that we got that far. Like a lot of times I'll say, well, look, here's the headlines. You're charged with this, <laughs> you know, and like today. You know, you can't, you, you can't drink when you're under 21. You can't, you know, or you can't hit people, you know. Another important component, he believes, is to simplify the bail orders defendants receive. He says not only does the document look different, but it's worded differently too. What I have now at the top of the page is, follow these rules and you'll be successful on bail. One defendant, who says he was charged with his eighth minor consuming alcohol violation in November, said he appreciated how he was treated by the judge in court. My license is suspended for six months or five months, whatever. I'm on probation, I gotta do community service, and I can't be on alcohol anymore. Will you be able to do that? Yeah. I put a tattoo, no alcohol. <laughs> Others are noticing Jeffrey's techniques. He points to one piece of legislation that passed unanimously in the state legislature and was signed into law by Governor Sean Parnell. That law allows fetal alcohol spectrum disorders to be a mitigating factor in some cases. You know, the message from my colleagues was the law needs to be changed. Well, we changed it. The law is different now. And now FASD can be a mitigating factor if you can show that you're affected which is a big hurdle, but that, a reasonable one. In practical terms, however, it has not had much of an effect in his court. FASD cannot lighten a sentence for people convicted of assaults. 
And because it is difficult to know if a person has an FASD, particularly without a diagnosis team in the region, Jeffrey has never used it to determine punishment. But it exists, and as far as I know, uh, it is the only one in the entire United States like it that specifically says FASD. Where he has been able to apply his discretion is in plea bargains, he says. He feels probation is often more appropriate than time served in jail for some crimes. But there's more that we need to look at. One is to make sure you don't do this stuff again and that other people get the message. And I think that this, uh, that this uh, plea agreement meets, meets that goal. Some in Barrow feel that he has been too lenient in the punishment of crimes. Members of the North Slope Police and others in Barrow say they wish Jeffrey gave longer prison sentences. Jeffrey says he's tough when he needs to be, and he feels obligated to try to make a difference in a region with a high rate of FASD. I have to do this this way for an ethical, I mean, I just have to. I mean, the, the court system has, uh, has this pledge of fairness. Fairness includes the opportunity to be heard the chance to have the court process explained and the right to be treated with respect. And um, that's part of, you know, what I'm trying to do.